Okay, let's get down to it, Drupalers. Welcome to an analysis of government sites in Australia. In this presentation today, you're going to see a comparative analysis uh, between government sites in Australia and in other jurisdictions, as well as in Drupal and other CMSs. Hi, my name is Murray Woodman, and I am the Managing Director and Solution Architect at Morphed. And most of the time I'm doing Drupal-y kinds of things in my day-to-day uh, my -day life, but occasionally I get to work on uh, an interesting passion project, and this is very much uh, one of those. Um, the results you're going to see today have all been uh, generated uh, as a research project at Morphed, and some of the results we've got are very interesting, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce them to you. All right, before we get into it, let's have a look at the methodology that was uh, used in this uh, research. Um, we went out and we collected 1,600 websites. Now, these websites were, as I said, based in Australia and overseas. But basically, they were designed to represent uh, in good numbers the various categories that we were interested in. Uh, we have content management systems, design systems, and various segments as well that we're looking at. So each site has been placed into one or more of these uh, for analysis purposes. Uh, we're using um, different tools to do the analysis. Uh, it is automated and uh, we're using Lighthouse to measure SEO, accessibility, performance and best practices. And we're also using Wappalyzer to measure the content management system. We've also written some uh, custom code as well uh, that will determine a security score based out of 100, and that's determined by the various uh, headers, security headers that can be uh, added to the response. Uh, and we've also got some custom design system uh, detection in our code as well. How has all this been put together? It's been put together with Drupal, of course. So we're using Drupal uh, to migrate sites in from a spreadsheet. Uh, and it's storing the data, analyzing the data, preparing statistics, doing the presentation layer, as well as providing an API to talk to the outside world. And we have uh, a couple of processes that are running in Docker containers, Node.js, uh, Lighthouse doing the scores, of course, and um, our little scraper, which sort of does Wappalizer and um, some other custom things for the security. Uh, so those two processes are running all the time and continually updating uh, the results. Some technical caveats uh, before we actually jump into the results. Uh, the first couple are around statistics. We understand the importance of getting good numbers uh, in each of the categories. We've aimed for like 50 or 100, as many as we can get, uh, reasonably get. Uh, the sampling we've done is not a random distribution across uh, the entire population, so we're not saying this represents all sites uh, you know, that are Drupal sites, for example. What we're doing is we're ser searching for the most popular, uh, or the most um, noticeable, or the most relevant sites. So generally, these are going to be high profile sites that are either doing well um, or you know, are the, the flagship sites for a, a certain category. So we're really picking the best sites here. Um, Lighthouse scores can vary, uh, so we're using um, some uh, you know, virtual machines to run this data. Um, we haven't seen too much variation there though, to be fair. Uh, not all sites can be processed with Lighthouse. If they aren't processed and there's a problem, they're not included in. And finally, our design system detection is just based on string matching around classes and things like that. Your mileage may vary there, but you know, we've done our best. Also, quality is many things. Now, of course, this presentation is basically presenting the sites and the findings in terms of quality, but we're only measuring five aspects, those ones on the left-hand side. But of course, there are very many others, such as design, the content, the popularity, uh, return on investment, user satisfaction, these kinds of things. These are all very important when you're building a site. And yes, you do want to optimize those when you're building a site. So we are only using what is easily measurable, what is objective, and what has value. And they're those five things that we've found, uh, and that's what our analysis is limited to. So let's go in and have a look at the results and rankings. 
Firstly, the distribution of the scores. It's basically following a normal distribution, which is uh, good to see. Um, if you remember back to school and university days, you have pass and fail, and you have credits, distinctions, and if you're lucky enough, high distinction. Uh, basically, we kind of see that distribution here, so that's worth remembering when we're looking at the results. Very few sites are in the, uh, you know, the 80 to 90 bracket, and there's only one site in the 90 to 100 bracket. So if you're up around in the 80s, you're doing pretty well. Um, let's turn to the CMS averages. So this is probably the first and really the most relevant slide for most of us. Uh, these are the average scores we get for content management systems. What we're looking at here is a stacked bar chart of the different dimensions that we're interested in. So the longer the bar, the better the score. And you can see here that Drupal's doing particularly uh, well and has actually gaps out ahead of a lot of the other uh, CMSs. Most of the CMSs do do uh, quite well on uh, accessibility and SEO. That's the blue and the green columns there. That's good to see. That's the bread and butter of uh, sort of web development. But it's really around uh, best practice, performance and security that Drupal is shining here. And, and that's what's allowing to take it out to first place. Um, looking at some other things, Open Cities seems to be doing pretty well on uh, their accessibility, winning that score. Um, let's see, Adobe Experience Manager, not so good on performance there. Maybe that's a reflection of the number of scripts that are, are running on the page. Um, and you know, most some other CMSs here are not scoring so well in on the performance and the uh, security side of things, which is where Drupal seems to be doing uh, relatively well. We also look at standard deviations, and um, that measures the variability within a certain category. Uh, so for instance, here we have uh, open cities with very low variability, and the, the smaller, the better. So open cities got very tightly uh, packed sites there. Um, the other, other CMSs, uh, more variability. You might expect Drupal to be right down the bottom because it is a very uh, wild system. You can put it together in many different ways. Um, but yeah, Drupal's coming middle of the pack there. Um, once again, the, you know, it's around the performance and the security where we're getting uh, sort of big variations uh, in, in terms of what the CMSs are doing. Uh, the design system. So we've uh, managed to detect a few design systems. Uh, Australian government design system, GovUK and Ripple are the ones out uh, in front. We do have some sites in New South Wales design system, but not enough. And we'd love to get some um, New Zealand uh, design system ones in the WA as well, but at the moment we don't have enough to, uh, to the show. GovUK is the gold standard in this area, and the Australian government design system is doing very well. GovUK wins on accessibility, uh, Australian government design system just a little bit behind. Um, Ripple overall is doing very well, that's from the Victorian single digital presence. They just seem to be getting punished on the performance side of things. I looked into that and uh, view websites can get uh, bad scores in, um, in Lighthouse. So that is something to, to think about when you're looking at um, that particular result. Uh, the standard deviations, very interesting. Ripple out in front, right? Very low variability, similar to open cities. It is a system that is regulated from top to bottom, from design to theme to you know code base to the platform to the delivery all very consistent and you can see that it's doing very well there um, super low scores on uh, variability around accessibility uh, as well strain government design system though quite a bit more variability um, not not too much more though than, than gov uk but I, I think that is sort of illustrative of the fact of the the variability uh, of the, the different implementations that you'll see of the Australian government design system. Uh, the segments now. Now we've pumped in quite a few segments here. Um, GovCMS and Commonwealth are quite correlated um, and so they're leading, moving all the way down to uh, more decentralized systems such as uh, local governments and universities. And in those cases, there is no overarching design system that will bring it all together. Um, so you can really see that the consistency there is, you know, the platform, the design system 
is playing uh, quite a big role. Um, on the distributions, a little bit harder to sort of pick out um, patterns here. I, I will just pick out GovUK down the bottom. Now that's not the GovUK design system. That's all the government sites in the UK. So you can see in the UK, they've still got a super mixed bag. So the design system may be doing well, but the GovUK sites still uh, a lot of variability um, there. Uh, you know, GovCMS uh, is doing, you know, quite well up the top and GovNZ, those sites are doing well, um, it just in terms of variability. Uh, at least. And we'll be picking out a, a few more things out of this, uh, the segments uh, a little bit later. So let's have a look at some of the, the findings and fun facts that we've seen along the way. Uh, we looked at Drupal Services Panel and Drupal Agencies, top 40 on the Drupal Marketplace. Drupal Services Panel seemed to be doing pretty well, which is good to know, just beating out the top 40 there. Uh, it's a case of the cobbler's shoes though, if you're aware of uh, that old saying, the cobbler shoes has holes in it, something along those lines. Um, you can see the Drupal services panel, the people that build GovCMS sites are not even scoring as much as GovCMS sites. So that would say that maybe GovCMS is list lifting their game, or perhaps the various agencies are just putting um, more flashy stuff on their home pages. You take your pick on that one. Uh, the regulation, I've mentioned this a few times, I would say a unified stack from top to bottom certainly has uh, beneficial impacts for um, the overall scores as well as reducing the, uh, the variability. Uh, yeah, local governments and universities are reinventing the wheel, falling into the same old problems, uh, each site build and not getting any of that, those gains from uh, iterating on, on a better system. Uh, design systems represent an opportunity. That's what I would argue here. Uh, in the top line, we have the different sites bucketed for the various jurisdictions. And in the bottom line, we have the corresponding design system variants. You can see uh, the UK to Gov UK design system, huge jump there, 64 to 77. And it's a similar story for New South Wales design system, but very, very few sites there. Uh, and you know, not so much of a gap for the, the Commonwealth. But certainly, yeah, the design system is a determining factor there, I would say. I haven't focused on leaderboards. I didn't want to for this presentation, for, but for a bit of fun, here are the top 20 Commonwealth sites for the ones that I've reported on. Uh, if your site's in there, congratulations. Um, but what do these sites look like? Are they boring or are they interesting? Well, they're really a mixed bag. The winner for all the sites uh, is Dries Boitart's blog. That's the one on the left. Now that is very plain, right? No images, scoring in the 90s. It is the winner. Well done, Dries. Um, but the second site, the Attorney General, uh, it's on GovCMS, very closely uh, aligned to the Australian Government Design System. It is only coming a little bit behind. And that site there has, you know, got you know graphics and hero graphics and whatnot. Uh, so it shows you can have a good looking site and still get good scores. And a shout out to the GovCMS site, who's also coming in the top 20 there. That's got pop-up videos and uh, you know JavaScript and uh, you know various things. So it too is is doing well. So it shows that uh, you can get good scores, you know, with graphical based websites. So in conclusion, let's run through them. Automation for the win. You know, thank you, uh, Lighthouse and Wappalizer. Your tools have been very helpful. Drupal performs very well. It is a wild system. There's a lot of variability, a lot of degrees of freedom, but it does score well and it does okay on the consistency side of things. Uh, most CMSs are doing very well in accessibility and SEO. This is the bread and butter of web development but performance and security really are making the difference here. I think there's uh, easy wins on the performance side of things, and I think it is the dedication and skill of the team to bring, bring best practices and uh, performance to the mix to, to lift it up to that high level. Uh, the consistency of the platform designed to delivery determines the overall quality and the consistency of the results. That's one of the main takeaways of this presentation. If you need to know more, it's easy to find out. All you've got to do is go to optimal.site-showcase.com. You'll see all of the results uh, you've seen here today, plus a whole lot more, including leaderboards, 
go there, click around, have some fun. I'm sure there's something there you'll find of interest. Phew, that's me. Time's out. Battery's done. Over to you guys for questions. Thank you. Hey, Murray. Um, one of the questions that has come in the live Q&A is best practices. Have you got any examples of good versus bad? Uh, yep. Hi there, everyone. Well, the best practices are the ones that are reported by Lighthouse. So what, what I'd really encourage you to do is to that as a little uh, you know, browser extension in, in Chrome, uh, you'll then be able to, to see the, the reports there. So you know, if you've got a site that you want to test, you can very easily do that with you know, the Lighthouse uh, extension. When it does that, it will give you a whole stack of um, recommendations. Um, the best practices is really interesting you pick up on that. Um, I did some correlations uh, between all the different factors. It's actually best practices, which is very strongly correlated to um, the security and the performance. So it shows that if you have a team that's interested in best practice, you're probably going to do well on security and performance uh, as well. To answer your specific question, it's a bit of a grab bag there in in those uh, you know best practices, and none are really coming to mind. They they tend to be quite finicky little little things where you really need a team who knows what they're doing to to twist it all up. So yeah, just go install Lighthouse and and uh, have a look. I would say. Um, there is another one in the discussion forum. Any specific examples of Australian government sites that do everything very well? Yes. So it's so funny, that question came up and then there was a slide with the top 20 leaderboard there of Commonwealth um, sites. But if you go to that optimal.site-showcase.com, you can browse all of those uh, different categories that you just saw and there'll be the top so you can go see the top 20 Gov CMS, the top 20 Commonwealth, even the top 20 Drupal agencies there. That's uh, that's um, and the top 20 Drupal service panels as well. That's interesting reading if you want to check that out. Okay. But yeah, to answer the question, I mean, you know, the Attorney General did very well. You know, the Gov CMS site there uh, did pretty well. As Australian Government Legal Service and you know, as a smattering of uh, others as well. So. It, I'll leave that to you to, to browse at your leisure. All right. I don't think we have any other question, either in the discussion forum or in live Q&A. Um, last chance, people, ask your questions if you have any. Come on, guys. Like, I, I recorded that at super fast speed, so I'd have five minutes at the end. So uh, <laughs> and we still have, let's use the last minute 48. Yeah. yeah, we still have one minute 45 seconds. So if you have some questions, shoot away. Otherwise, we'll just end the session. All right. Most important thing on a great website. Sorry, what's the most important thing on a great website? Well, you have those five things that we were measuring, but then you had all those other things as well. So I, I would argue I've presented, you know, five very important things for quality. And, you know, Lighthouse is based around those things because that directly translates into better user experience. And those numbers get pumped into their, their search engine algorithm, right? So they are, you know, considered important. Certainly accessibility, right? You've got to look after your users and SEO. You've got to bring the users in. And, you know, that's why the CMS is a are concentrating on that. Um, but of course, you know, you've got all the other things there as well. I, I would love to try to incorporate some of those other things into the analysis. Um, guys, just as well, like I will be popping over to the Morph booth after. So if you want to talk about this in, in more detail, please, you can pop by there and we can uh, uh, have a chat. And there's one question. How long, how long will you maintain the site? <laughs> Very good question again. Um, it was a pleasure to make that site and it was like a little sort of sh showcase experiment thing, right? You know, where, but you know, it's, it's turned out pretty well. If people want us to investigate a category, let us know. And, you know, we might be able to put that in and, uh, you know, augment the results uh, that are there, or if we want to investigate other things. So I was, I'd say we would still be keeping it going for a while. That's the aim, you know, let's, uh, let's, let's try to improve the quality of sites out there. And there's Thank the you. last question we are con actually. Oh, we can still go. Uh, yeah. okay. Any government sites assessed during using static web? 
any sites use any government web? sites mm. if they're using static web i don't know now we there <laughs> wapalizer re reports there's no cms uh category which you know it's quite a number of sites in there so you know you can't detect everything so of course there's going to be uh you know a lot of variation uh out there in cms's uh used so um you know uh <laughs> i can't really say how how the site was generated that that's a bit hard for us to detect i'm sorry but we'll have to cut short now um thanks a lot Murray. it was an awesome presentation bye okay thanks everyone thanks for the questions bye bye